Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. If you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and also means you don't miss out on my lighthearted takes on all things analytics, be that Power BI, Fabric, maybe even throw in some Databricks and DBT sometime soon as well. Now, today's video is absolutely a Fabric themed video. We're gonna be looking at the brand new folders feature. So, Folders in Fabric are here. They were a brand new feature announced at the Fabric Community Conference the other week. Uh, it has been a feature that has been one of the most requested items ever for uh, the Power BI service and now the Fabric service. In fact, if you take a look, the original idea goes all the way back to August 2015. So we are looking at almost nine years that this has been a requested feature. Now, personally, I was never really that bothered. This has been a feature that I personally didn't vote for. For me, it has been a hangover from a good old SQL Server reporting services. So way back in 2015, when Power BI was first released, uh, it was almost seen as the successor for reporting services. Now, in my eyes, it was a slightly different product. SSRS has always been about um, operational reporting. Power BI was a little bit more about um, analytics and exploration. So it wasn't quite like for like, but it was kind of seen, you know, as that, um, you know, heir to the throne, as it were, in terms of the uh, Microsoft reporting. And SSRS had folders. That's how you arrange your reports inside of your uh, reporting services server. You create reports, you create security on, um, you put them into folders, you create security on those folders. That was effectively how you managed it. So why change now, right? What is the point of all of a sudden, nine years of people asking for it, and Microsoft have finally buckled and actually put folders into the Fabric service. Well, ultimately the world has changed with Fabric. And if we look at Fabric Workspace, we will see that very, very quickly, you get very, very messy very, very quickly. So originally in Power BI, you'd have had um, Power BI reports, uh, alongside reports, you'd have had semantic models. I guess later on, you started to get things like data flows and also uh, paginated reports as well. Uh, and managing those four art artifacts inside of one workspace wasn't really any trouble. With Fabric, we've got these seven different uh, developer experiences. You end up getting an awful lot of different artifacts in there um, and it becomes an absolute mess. So it's very, very difficult to understand, um, you know, which, which artifacts are doing what. Um, it becomes cumbersome to navigate. Now, last year, I actually wrote a blog on the Advancing Analytics uh, website, which is all about naming conventions for fabric artifacts. And part of the reason uh, I cited for having a good naming convention is becomes it becomes a, a good way to organize your artifacts. You know, it means you can uh, group things together, uh, things that appear side by side if they are kind of the diff same sort of artifact, same uh, type of item in fabric, and also if they belong to the same um, fabric experience and it helps organize your um, organize those artifacts and, and make them neater and, and just easier from a user experience perspective to find a way around. But that kind of doesn't matter now because we've got folders. We can now create a folder, organize our artifacts in a way that makes sense for us. It's going to make that experience navigating the workspace loads, loads easier. So how do they work? Uh, literally, if you are in your workspace, uh, down here in the new, you've got a folder. Create whatever folder you want that to be. And then you can uh, select where you want to move things and you can move the artifacts in there. Nice and simple. So one of the things that does interest me is potentially what are the best ways to arrange those folders? You know, what might be some good practices to create a logical structure that's going to be able to um, make navigating that workspace particularly intuitive. So I've got a couple of ideas. You could organize your workspaces by the experience. So for any items that belong to a particular uh, type, a particular experience in Fabric, you could create a folder for each one of those. Or maybe you could go more granular than that and arrange your folders by type. So for specific types, you know, be that data flows, lake houses, notebooks, uh, create a folder for each of, each of those. But one of the patterns I've fallen on, which I quite like, is to organize your folders in terms of your data processing zones. So we often talk about, from a lake house perspective, uh, the idea of the medallion architecture. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of calling those uh, bronze, silver, gold, as you would traditionally. Um, I prefer something a bit more descriptive. So uh, raw for your raw data, uh, base for that cleanse data that's uh, had sort of any sort of data quality rules applied, uh, curated 
uh, for that layer uh, that's going to have that nice model data ready for analytics. Uh, and in this example here, I've also thrown in a, a real-time folder for a slightly different workload there too. Uh, and he's even an artifact, my master pipeline that is going to uh, orchestrate all of that data processing sitting outside my folder. Now, when the folders announcement was made, pretty much the very next question I, I asked was, can you put security on the folders, right? Because in um, SSRS world, that's almost what the security model was. You would uh, create a folder, you'd be able to add either individuals or groups to that folder to decide whether or not they could access the content in it. If I look here, uh, I don't see any option in the context menu that's going to let me um, add any kind of security groups. And I don't um, you know, see anything in the documentation either that, that says this is here to support security. That's fine. Get over it. So I guarantee there will be somebody somewhere screaming at Microsoft. So oh, they've done a half-baked job. They've, they've, they've not really done a good implementation here of folders. Why on earth can we not do security at folder level? That's not what these folders are for. If you want to be able to uh, control security around artifacts, do that at a workspace level. If you need separation of concerns, I absolutely uh, recommend you do that um, on a workspace by workspace basis. These folders, they are a user experience thing. They're there to help you organize your artifacts. It's a quality of life improvement. I think it is a good job, uh, you know, and the fact that it doesn't include security, I am totally comfortable with. For me, that is not the purpose of these folders. What I do want to do though, is I want to explore what the folders can do, right? Okay, so um, what exactly can you, can't you do with um, the new folders feature? One of the things that they announced as soon as they announced folders is not only can you have folders, you can have folders inside of your folders. So you get subfolders. Yep, that was my attempt at an exhibit and He-Man crossover. Not quite sure if I pulled it off. But yeah, old school pimp my ride. We know how much you like folders. We put folders in your folders. Um, what I was gonna find out though, how low can you go? So we're gonna have a quick look here just to see how nested those file structures can be. And there's your answer. They can only go up to 10 folders deep in terms of nestedness, which I'm pretty comfortable with. I'm happy that Microsoft have, you know, that subfolders option doesn't just go uh, an arbitrary one level deep for argument's sake. It does give you a little bit more flexibility to go maybe uh, two or three deep. Um, 10 levels deep is not a challenge. There is not a, you know, if somebody out there gets to 10 levels deep in their folder structure, honestly, I think you're doing it wrong, but at least you've got the flexibility there. Um, but also, I'm glad it's not limitless either. I think 10 is a sensible, uh, sensible level in terms of how low you can go for nesting your folders. Now, I found a couple of weird gotchas when it comes to folders, uh, which I'll uh, show now. If I switch over from Power BI to my data, data engineering, in fact, let's go, let's go with my data factory, um, data factory experience here. So one thing that's pretty neat is it seems to cache where you are in the folder structure. If you go back to a particular uh, workspace, having navigated away from it, it remembers um, whereabouts in the folder structure you were and takes you straight there, which um, is kind of nice. Sometimes it's a bit of a nuisance if you're not expecting it, um, but to use the breadcrumb trail to get back to the level you want to get to is not really any drama anyway. Uh, when you are inside of a folder and you want to add a new item, bizarrely, you can't create data flows inside of a folder. Literally every other Fabric experience, if I wanted to uh, create myself a notebook inside of the folder, it's uh, absolutely not a problem. But yeah, if I want to create a data flow, I can't. Now that's not to say that uh, data flows aren't supported. Um, I can literally come up here create a data flow at my root level in my workspace. And if I want to actually add that to a folder, that's fine. So data flows can exist inside of folders. You just can't 
create them inside of the folder when you're there. You've got to create it at the root level and then move it, um, which also takes me to this annoying checkbox. So that is basically the way to move things around in terms of folder structures. If you've got a, an item that you want to move to a particular folder, uh, use this checkbox uh, and then you've got the, um, the move option up here at the top of the screen. Uh, so if I want to move these into my level two folder, I absolutely can. Um, but I found this to be quite a misleading checkbox because whilst I was experimenting and um, you know creating uh, my demos for this video, for instance, I, I wanted to bulk delete some um, some items. So you almost expect, with as with pretty much every other Microsoft experience ever, you tick those boxes and there's going to be some kind of option to delete, and that's not the case. Um, you still got to go in and you still got to delete things on an individual basis. Another thing that I checked out was how do folders interact with the existing navigation options within Fabric? So um, previously, and again, this is something that I covered in that naming conventions blog that I did last year. If you wanted to organize your experiences in your items uh, effectively, um, even though there weren't folders there, you could use the filters to um, only show specific types of um, types of item in Fabric. So uh, coming over here, uh, you'd use this filter up in the top right corner. And I kind of figured, wouldn't it be nice if I were to filter at the root level for a particular type of experience, say, I don't know, data flows for argument's sake. Um, and then by filtering for data flows, it hid the folders that didn't contain data flows. That'd be quite a nice feature, wouldn't it? Uh, it doesn't do that. Uh, literally, um, if you uh, don't have any filterable items uh, on display in whatever um, view you're in, uh, it is just um, filtered out. But if you go down a level, uh, you can still uh, use those filters once you're inside a folder. Once you've got effectively um, visible items, visible components there, they are still filterable. So you can apply those filters uh, if you want to. Uh, and then the very last thing that I experimented with was how do folders work with deployment pipelines? So I've set up a um, deployment pipeline for this particular um, scenario. Uh, you can see uh, these are all my items that I want to deploy. I've got myself a, a test workspace here. And I guess what I wanted to understand is if I were to deploy all of these um, items into my test workspace, would my folders go with it? So let's click and find out. Okay, so that didn't quite go to plan. Uh, eventually, my deployment pipeline just fell over, and for whatever reason, I could not move my artifacts from my uh, dev workspace to my test workspace, um, which is strange. So, before making the video, I did a bit of testing um, just to see what you know, see what outcomes I was going to expect. Uh, I can let you know that uh, when it did let me deploy between workspaces, yes, the folders were copied across. Now, again, that deployment pipeline experience in Fabric still seems to be a little bit work in progress. There's definitely some gremlins in it, as kind of demonstrated by the fact that that just completely fell over. Even when I could get it to work yesterday, I found some strange behaviors in terms of the fact that it copied the folders across and it put some artifacts into the correct folders and then it left some artifacts out of the folders. So um, it seems to me like the intention is that yes, folders will be respected as part of deployment pipelines. Uh, obviously, there's still a few kinks to iron out there from uh, Microsoft's perspective. Um, but yeah, the fact that the, you know, moving the folders between environments um, is um, going to be a feature of it uh, is definitely a welcome thing. So there you have it. The truth about folders in Fabric, or hopefully everything you might need to know about how folders uh, do work. The announcement around this has had so much hype. It's been almost quite amusing with all the amazing sort of um, announcements going on around the Fabric Community Conference. Um, 
you know, some great features around Copilot, around task flows, yet somehow it is the uh, folders announcement that seems to have uh, captured the imagination of the community. So hopefully you're more informed now about how those folders do work. Do hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it interesting. If you have done, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you've got any comments about folders, any questions, you know, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Good, bad, indifferent? Don't forget to leave uh, comments below um, in the comment section. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, again, you'll uh, be able to keep up with me and my thoughts about uh, things like Power BI Fabric and, and other analytics areas of the world as well. Uh, once again, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.